Okay, so we're here in chapter six. And um, let's start by talking about chocolate chip cookies. Because um, sometimes when we're talking about things in chemistry, it's good to have um, something that you might have experience with that you can apply. So if you've ever made chocolate chip cookies, or really if you've ever cooked anything, you know that you need ingredients in specific amounts. So for example, to make one batch of chocolate chip cookies, you need one bag of chocolate chips. A chemical experiment is much the same way. You need to know how much of each reactant or ingredient um, you need in order to produce a certain amount of product. So chapter six is really focused in on how can we know how much of a chemical we have. And we're gonna start out by introducing um, a new unit conversion concept, which is the mole. And the mole is defined, um, one mole is defined as 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of something. So it could be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, or 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd ions, or molecules, or formula units, or particles of any kind. So just a tip about that formula units, that's a new um, term that you probably haven't heard before. It's gonna apply um, to ionic compounds, because if you think about it, when you make an ionic compound, you have a cation and an anion, and the actual crystal structure of ionic compounds shows us that it's a sheet of cations and a sheet of anions. So you don't have these discrete molecules. So instead of referring to ionic compounds by molecules, we refer to them as formula units. So then the question becomes, how do you know when to use what label? So it all goes back to what you're talking about. So if I'm talking about sodium, which is an element all by itself, then we know that the smallest particle of sodium is an atom. So if I, had, if I said I had one mole of sodium, I would say I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium. On the other hand, if I have carbon dioxide, CO2, this is a covalent compound. It's definitely not an atom. Covalent compounds we know exist as discrete molecules. So therefore, I would say that one mole of CO2 contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Sodium chloride, an ionic compound. Here's where those formula units come into play. The smallest unit of an ionic compound bill will be referred to as a formula unit. I might also run into two ions. For instance, if I had 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd nitrite ions, that would equal one mole. So how do we use this with conversions? Well, if we think about it, we've said that one mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles, which is a unit conversion. So if I might be asked a question like this, where it says, how many moles of sodium are contained in 350,000 atoms of sodium? Using our unit conversion knowledge, we start with what we've been given, which is the 350,000. atoms, and then I need to multiply by a fraction that removes atoms and gets me to moles. So handily, we have our unit conversion up here, where we know that particles, in sodium's case, will be equal to atoms. So if I have atoms up here in the fraction, then I should have atoms down in the bottom of the fraction, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms equals one mole. And if you put this into your calculator, 350,000 divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, I get 5.81 times 10 to the negative 19th. and that is moles of sodium. There's also formula masses, because if you think about it, when you go to make your chocolate chip cookies, you don't measure out atoms of chocolate. You measure out bags of chocolate. 
Same idea when you go to do a chemical experiment. You don't measure out atoms of sodium because we don't have the capability to do that. On the other hand, we do have the capability to measure out grams. It turns out that when you look at the periodic table, you'll recall back in chapter three, we talked about the fact that there was this thing called the average atomic mass. So for instance, chlorine, when we look at its box on the periodic table, had chlorine, and its atomic number was 17, and then there was this 35.45. And we said that was the average atomic mass of all the different isotopes of chlorine in atomic mass units, and it is. And it turns out it is also, handily, and pretty amazing actually, the mass in grams of one mole. So 35.45 grams of chlorine equals one mole of chlorine. And because that's the case, we can write it as 35.45 grams per mole, and that is called the molar mass. So how might we figure out the molar mass of something that's not just an element? For instance, calcium phosphate. So the first thing we would need The first thing we would need is the formula of calcium phosphate. So calcium, remember, is a plus two. Phosphate is a negative three. So my final formula will look like this. And if I want to determine the molar mass of one mole of this, that means I need to add up the masses of the individual elements. So I need to have three calciums, two phosphorus, and eight oxygen. Notice the two here outside of the phosphate is being applied inside to tell me how many phosphorus and how many oxygens I have. To figure out the molar mass, then, I need to find the mass of one mole of calcium, which I can do by going to my periodic table and seeing that calcium, one mole of calcium, equals 40.08 grams. So if I want three calciums, then I need to multiply that by three. Phosphorus is 30.97 grams per mole. And I have two of them, so I'm gonna multiply that by two. And then oxygen is 16.00 grams per mole. And I have eight of them, so I'm gonna multiply that by eight. So, 40.08 times three gives me 120.24 grams per mole. And 30.97 times two gives me 61.94 grams per mole. And 16 times eight gives me 128.00 grams per mole. But if you'll recall, the question was, what is the molar mass of calcium phosphate? So now I take all of these and add them together. And that gives me a molar mass of 310.18 grams per mole. So one mole of calcium phosphate equals 310.18 grams. Your compound formula also contains a mole ratio. So one mole of sodium chloride contains one mole of sodium and one mole of chlorine. So one mole of sodium chloride can be referenced then, made into a unit conversion right here with one mole of sodium. And I can also say that one mole of sodium chloride equals one mole of chlorine. So what are the mole ratios found in iron three carbonate? Well, iron three carbonate is Fe2CO3. And when we look at that, we see that there are two irons for every whole iron three carbonate. So that means one mole of iron three carbonate, which I'm just gonna say I see here, because I'm gonna run out of space, equals two moles of iron. 
But I can also say that one mole of iron three carbonate, again, I'm going to abbreviate, equals nine moles of oxygen. See how I just pulled that oxygen out? Or the final one, well, actually, there's two more, is one mole of iron three carbonate equals three moles of carbon, or, and this is the last one, one mole of iron three carbonate equals three moles of carbonate ion. So I can do this with any formula. One unit of the formula, or in this case one mole of the formula, is ratioed to the individual amounts of each atom. So you might be faced then with this type of a question on your homework and for the quiz. How many grams of oxygen are contained in a 450 million molecule sample of P2O5? So let's look at what the question is giving us and what it's asking. How many grams of oxygen? And we're given 450, really big number, molecules of P2O5. So I need to get to grams of oxygen, and I'm starting in molecules of P2O5. Well, if I'm in P2O5 and I'm going to go to O, and it's, it's part of P2O5, then I probably need to look at the formula and see that for every one mole of P2O5, there are how many moles of oxygen? Five. Well, that will come in useful. The other thing I'm noticing is that this is molecules, and then eventually I need to go to grams. Now, molecules only has one unit conversion. We know that 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules equals one mole of that thing. And this was molecules of P2O5, so it's moles of P2O5. Grams of oxygen, there's only one way to get there. We have to look to the molar mass. One mole of oxygen equals 32, oops, excuse me, thinking O2, which is pretty common. Let me erase. Do, do, do. Get rid of that. One mole of oxygen is 16 grams. Okay. So I've got three different unit conversions. Let's start with what we are given and progress to where we need to go. So 450 and lots of zeros and this is molecules of P2O5. And I need to change that to grams of oxygen. Now remember, we said that there was only one conversion that got me out of molecules. It was using Avogadro's number. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, P2O5, is equal to one mole of P2O5. At which point, my molecules of P2O5 have canceled out, which is great. Now I'm left with moles of P2O5. I need to get to oxygen. So over here, my relationship between P2O5 and oxygen makes sense to use. So one mole P2O5 and I put my five moles of oxygen on top. So now moles of P2O5 have disappeared and I'm looking at moles of oxygen. The question asked me for grams of oxygen. So I need to use my last unit conversion that I had up here to go from moles to grams. So one mole of O using the molar mass from the periodic table is 16.00 grams of O. And then it's just a process of putting it into your calculator. 450, lots of zeros. Um, divide by my uh, Avogadro's number. And then multiply by 5. And then multiply by 16. And I get 5.97. Now, the issue here, though, is I only have two sig figs. 
right? So 5.97, um, when I go to round, actually becomes 6.0. So I'm going to change this to a 6. Point, except now I have, I'm just going to have to erase. Whoops. Except I don't want to erase the whole thing. Come back. <laughs> 